and the players that can press the ball over and over, they have all the swings that we want. They're able to keep that inclination to the ground through their trail shoulder, which we'll talk about, and they actually lower some. If we take your setup position and we get into an impact position, you need to be able to get your trail shoulder down and forward, down and forward. So as I work from setup into impact, my shoulder's working down and forward. Notice my trail arm is more bent. Notice my trail wrist is more bent, right? You see those differences? Trail arm and trail wrist are more bent. Right shoulder down and forward. And so it may feel relative to normal, like you are actually physically lowering in space as your trail shoulder works down and forward. Notice as my hands go forward, from face on, the club head gets farther from the line, from down the line. Set up, impact to uh, compress every ball. Now, if that's true, and that's my impact, can I just stay where I am at setup? I can't, because the club head's off the ground, right? How do I get that forward? Trail shoulder down and forward. Right shoulder down and forward, drip and sweat. Take my normal setup, and I'm gonna feel that same feel. I like to get into that impact pose. Handles going forward, right shoulder, down and forward. Hey guys, today I wanna to talk to you about the hanger training aid. I absolutely love this. I firmly believe that this is good for every single golfer. This hanger here creates and controls what I think is the most important part of the swing, which is the wrist angle. It snaps right on. It takes me probably 30 seconds to put on. I can put it right in my golf bag. And best of all is you can hit balls with it. You can actually hit balls with it. So I love this hanger training aids. Look at when I do that well, how that sits on my forearm. Now watch when I cut my wrist, how that comes off. Immediate feedback for where my wrist angle is at. No one that can have too flat of a left wrist. One of the few things that all good ball strikers have we're trying to have, flat left wrist, right? Super easy to use, incredible immediate feedback with the coupon code gorgonogolf.com. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'll put all the details down in the description down below. All right, so if you're like a lot of the golfers that I work with, the number one priority is solid contact and compressing the ball and hitting it solid. And in the conversations I have, you know, I coach mostly online now. We have kagornogolf.com. I don't coach as much in person anymore, lots of online coaching. So we have a lot of discussions about things, theory, conversations, questions that come up. And one of the things that always comes up is, hey, what can I put in my swing to hit the ball consistently solid? And while there are so many differences amongst golf swings, there's some things that are kind of fundamentally non-negotiable, okay, that we have to be able to do. And one of the things that I want you to see here uh, to guarantee that we can compress the ball every time. The simple version of this idea is if I took my setup position and I drew a line, right? Maybe we'll do this, Danielle, on the screen with a line down my back. So it's kind of the angle that I'm bent over. And you look at all these players at impact from their setup to impact, you're going to notice two distinct things. Number one is the angle that they start at, they're at relatively the same angle at impact. And that just makes good sense, right? If the golf ball's on the ground, I need to be able to hit the ball first, ground second. Would it be easier to do that by me changing the distance I am from the ground all the time? No, of course, you would never do that on purpose. You'd say, hey, listen, if I need to compress the ball, hit the ball, then ground, that would be much easier if I could figure out how to just stay the same darn distance from the ground. Now, that's easier to do on the downswing if you do it on the backswing, but we're gonna talk just downswing here. So number one, you draw the line down the back. You need to figure out how to get back to that. Now I'm here to guide you through that, how to help you with feels. You need to figure out how to get back to that. The second thing that you're gonna notice is when you look at the players we drew the line on their head at setup, how many do you see that are taller than they started? None, right? Now we're gonna probably show you one, two, three of those. I could show you the top 200 players in the world, and you'd see the same thing. They lower, or they're slightly closer to the ground at impact than they were during the setup position. So just going into guaranteed compression, the players that can press the ball over and over, they have all the swings that we want. They're able to keep that inclination to the ground through their trail shoulder, which we'll talk about, and they actually lower some. Okay, now how do they do that? And how can you put this feel into your swing? Well, the main thing we were talking about in the group was your trail shoulder. If we take your setup position and we get into an impact position, 
you need to be able to get your trail shoulder down and forward, down and forward. So as I work from setup into impact, my shoulder's working down and forward. Notice my trail arm is more bent. Notice my trail wrist is more bent, right? You see those differences? Trail arm and trail wrist are more bent. Right shoulder down and forward. And so it may feel relative to normal, like you are actually physically lowering in space as your trail shoulder works down and forward. Now, if we take a look at the face-on version and I look at my normal setup and why you have to do that, here's my normal setup. Right arm has been a couple degrees, my right wrist is fairly flat. Now, if we look at the impact position, what I've done is I've actually shortened that distance. So if we draw a line on the end of the club, here's my setup. Now watch my impact. You see what happens? So the club head actually gets farther from that line. If, you, if we get the face on and the down the line version, notice as my hands go forward from face on, the club head gets farther from the line, from down the line. Setup, impact to uh, compress every ball. Now if that's true, and that's my impact, can I just stay where I am at setup? I can't because the club head's off the ground, right? How do I get that forward? Trail shoulder down and forward, right? So you hear this covering the ball look, this um, chest down, body over the ball. And that's somewhat true, but what I really want you to cue in on is the trail shoulder being down, your rib cage and trail shoulder really being lower and forward. So as you start to hit balls here, we're looking for a feel and then we're looking to confirm that right with video. And you're gonna see some of these images so you can get a visual of what we're looking to do. Then you wanna feel to match that visual and then you want video to confirm that feel. Visual, feel, confirmation. So you got the visual. The feel to start with is right shoulder, down and forward. I almost like to do that with your palm open, like it's just facing the target, hold it in front of you like this. Make a little bit of a backswing and then get your shoulder feel like it's going down into the ball to the point where your hand gets a couple feet out in front like this. That's essentially what you wanna feel like you're doing through the ball right there. So as we start to hit, I'm gonna just go out towards that clock there. I got a seven iron. I'm gonna feel that trail shoulder down and forward. Not a bad idea to feel a little bit of that impact position as well, but right shoulder down and forward. And you should be able to hear from the sound of that 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 ball was crunched there. Now, ideally, it's that simple, okay? What we want when you go golf is like a simple feel that produces contact, that produces a ball flight. So let's just start with that, right shoulder down and forward. I'm gonna do a couple of these where I get my palm towards the target, right shoulder down and forward, drip and sweat. Take my normal setup and I'm gonna feel that same feel. I like to get into that impact pose. Handles going forward right shoulder, down and forward. Now, even when I'm hitting, right, if we watch those, I'm more or less just maintaining the height of my head, which I can hit pretty solid from there, but that means I'm gonna have a little bit more right arm throw, a little bit more right wrist throw. So I'm still hitting it solid, but if I really wanted to maximize how much I would compress it, I would even have my shoulder work down and forward, like my rib cage down and forward. I'm telling you, if you stand up normally, you're gonna feel like your rib cage, like this to me probably doesn't look crazy, but it feels like my rib cage, my shoulder are gonna like kiss the ground. And of course, when you go at speed, it's never gonna be as exaggerated as it feels. Right shoulder, right rib cage down. So it's not chest down, keep my chest down forever. I need that chest to be physically down in space, but turn towards the target. I need that chest to be physically down in space but turn towards the target. So my rib cage and my shoulder and my right pec are the pieces that are pointed down towards the ball. So my impact with my trail arm and hand are gonna look like this. So the chest is down, but it's not pointed down, it's pointing towards the target. Right shoulder, right rib cage, down and forward. Yeah, and all of those are about as good as I can hit. Now the last piece, because this is gonna come up is when you're doing this, I, I, I want you to try and get your chest and shoulder as close as you can, even overdo some. Now, inevitably, if you stand up taller because you've got farther from the ground, you need to throw your arm and wrist just to get to the ball. So if you draw a line on someone's head and you come down and you actually get taller, how do you get to the ball? You have to throw your right arm and right wrist. 
So now if we do this trail rib cage and shoulder down, but you still throw your arm and wrist, you're gonna hit it fat. How do you offset that? Is by having your right arm, instead of straight, more bent, having your right wrist instead of straight, more bent, so the handle's more forward. So your right shoulder, right rib cage down, right arm and right wrist stay bent. Right shoulder, right rib cage down and forward, right arm, right wrist bent. Now, like any of these things we go through in detail, the details matter, right? Like there's so many videos that come out, it's like simple tips, simple, simple, simple. Well, golf ain't simple, right? Like the details matter as you're going through this. And if you can just think shoulder down, that's cool. If not, and you're hitting fat, you need to add in those feels, right? So start with the shoulder, add in the right arm, right wrist. The, the chest is down, but it doesn't stay down. The chest needs to turn. Right shoulder and right rib cage down, like an oblique crunch. My hips and, and pelvis are turning. My legs are straightening without me thinking about it. Rib cage down and forward, shoulder down and forward. Yeah, that's as good as I can do. So that's how you can guarantee compression. There's a lot that could go wrong. Something as simple as a grip that's off, a club face that's open. Like you have to get those things checked. And that's where CoronaGolf.com, a local pro you can go to to check that you have those things in place. It makes all this easier. Okay, but at the end of the day, you draw a line down your back. If you're taller than that at impact, you will not compress the ball consistently. It's as simple as that. Those are some feels that hopefully help guide you. If you find this helpful, come back and watch this, do this drill, utilize video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions.